Welcome back to Your Property Empire. Now, during the, meet, uh, during the week, we had an email in from Edwin in Sydney, and he asked, you've often talked about buying properties before they come on the market and before auction. In a rising market with record prices achieved, why would any vendor want to sell before auction? And as a buyer's agent, how do you get them off the market? So maybe to start with Charles, give us an insight into vendors. When, when a vendor lists their property for sale, what's going through their mind? Are they normally so motivated to sell, they've got a price in mind, or they're just kind of leaving it open? Oh, they've definitely got a price in mind, and I think that, that it is one of the issues we're currently having right now. If you've got a, a minor slowdown in the auction clearance rates, which we've had in parts of Australia, but not all of Australia, it's because the new levels of stock that are coming on are coming on at a lot higher price now. And so people are sitting back a little bit and going, well, hang on, a, a month ago I could pay 850 for an apartment here, and now it looks like they want 900 to 925. The valuers might not even value it up there because the valuers will start to get nervous because they got absolutely crushed in the, in the last time. They got blamed for everything. And, and I think there's a whole series of people just standing and looking back. So the sellers have a definite price in mind. Absolutely do. And I think that those that work with an agent that does the marketing promises to review that marketing every week, promises to, to, to give the accurate feedback from open for inspections. That seller can go to an auction knowing that they may not have a buyer, but they may have some interest. Uh, when the agents pull it off the, uh, from an auction, generally it's because they themselves haven't done their job correctly and they're a bit nervous and I don't think it's appropriate. So where we see auction clearance rates and we see homes listed for sale, that's not the whole story. You need to know what price it's coming on at because you could have a whole bunch of stock, but if it's overpriced, and, it's and not real it's stock. It's true. I mean, you think about it yourself. You're watching, uh, you're in an apartment complex and you saw something where you live sell for you know, 750, you know, a month ago, and then all of a sudden went for eight. You're going to say to yourself, "Gee, maybe we can get 850 or nine. So you do. You test the market. You go up higher, even higher, and then and then they come off the market because the agent can't get that figure. Now we'll put up a, a graphic of some of the reasons of why people would sell before auction. Uh -huh. um, I mean, the first one up there, we've got kind of achieve the right price. Uh, I guess some people have got that price in mind, and if they get it, who cares if it's at auction or before? Yeah, and if, and if the market's uh, you know been hot as it has been in some places, they've got the chance of getting more, and that's the beauty of auction. If you put a property for sale in a real estate agent's window and you put a price on it, the only way the price is going to go is down. A person's not going to walk into your office and say, "I like that picture so much, I want to pay more." They never do. So it, with an auction, they're always challenged, and you've got a chance of getting more money. And the, the next one I have was um, the guaranteed deal because we've offered, say, 500 grand at 9 o'clock at night and then the tenants realised it's up for sale and said, I'll give you 520 in the morning. And people would say, well, surely you'd always go for the 520, but it's not always the case, is no, it? You, you no, know, greed kicks in and all of a sudden the, the value, value might come out and things aren't working out or the bank says no to them for finance. There's all sorts of reasons. Or the tenant doesn't give you 520 in the morning and, and, and you've annoyed the vendor at 500. Yeah, and here's the unfortunate thing. If you're looking to buy something else and you miss out on that, it's a double. Double, double whammy for you. Mm. Because it's, it's a bird in the hand, like 500, who knows if 520 is actually going to appear and then suddenly you've, you've annoyed the 500 yeah. grand guy. Do you know what, Chris, most people will stop and wait for the 920 or the 520, I'm not sure which figure you use, but that extra 20, that they will and, and it, it does generally happen, that's what does happen. And look, some of the other things that we've got coming up on the screen as well is the privacy from the neighbours, you don't want the open for inspections. A lot of people are private people when it comes to money. Yes, and again, if the marketing is done effectively and the opens are done effectively and the feedback is given to the seller every week, then at least at the end of the auction campaign, you as a seller know for sure that if you have to take less, that everything has been done to demonstrate to you that that's what the price really should be. And that's what an auction does. That's what an auction does. And I think just finally we, there we had is don't want the tenants disturbed. So if people have got good tenants in there again, they don't want to upset them. It's perfect. And, and a lot of tenants will prepare the property for sale knowing that it could be an investor that might buy the property, keep it and keep them in there if the property's looked after. So it gives everybody an opportunity to prepare themselves. And, and these are definite reasons why an auction can work. And so too can the buyers plan their time. You know, people have got work, work hours and so on. And if they know there's a twilight auction or a Saturday auction, they can also plan their family time to come out and look at a property. Now, the second part of the question was um, how do buyers' agents get the silent sales, i.e. sales that aren't even listed on the internet. Now, 
it's going to be good to get your perspective because some agents think bars agents can't stand them, they're just trying to get the cheapest possible price, whereas some agents think no, bars agents good because they're guaranteed buyers. Yeah, well, I, I, have, I guess we've talked about this so many times about the relationship you have with real estate practitioners. In your industry, as a buyer's advocate or buyer's agent, you have to have the right relationships with agents so that you are top of mind. And we always say that buyers and potential uh, buyers or sellers, etc., should have that relationship if they expect to get into the market at the right time and be aware of those silent properties. You do that, that's what you do for a living. And if anybody really does want to get in there and get those silent properties for sale, they need to do what you do. And we've had it in a lot of cases that when agents are pitching for business, you're nearly always up against one or two other agencies, aren't you? Yes. And so if you can say, well, or if a good agent says, well, just let me get one buyer through who's got guaranteed clients behind them, and they might be able to make you an offer straight away without even having to go to auction or paying your marketing fees yeah, and the that, rest of it. It's a great thing to have. Often that scares people because, you know, people think that maybe I'm selling too cheap. But yes, if, if an agent has those connections with buyer agents or clients that they know are looking for a property, they can always ring that person. You can ring that person on the spot and say, look, if I have a property in your price range, if I can get this property for sale, would you like to come and have a look? If the contract is available, and et cetera, et cetera, and I can show the property, it's going to encourage the seller to want to do business with that agent for sure. So certainly a lot more uh, reasons around there. Now for more information on how to get deals off market or for other ideas on trying to uh, set out your investment strategy, you can always download a copy of my book. Just go to yourempire.com.au. You can download it for free. And we'd love to get your questions as well. So send us an email at chris at yourempire.com.au. Now it's time to take a look around the country and see what's happening with our clearance I rates. I do need to ask, where's Tom? Tom, I don't know where he is today. He's, 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 he's probably very, very busy. He's, he's a busy a man, that Tom. With Hilton to Gold again. That's probably what it is. As it Hilton to Gold? Well, I haven't around. seen Tom for a while, so I wondered whether he's okay. No, he was around last week. I think he's down in Melbourne last week. Oh, okay, all right, no problem. So up clearance rates. Clearance rates. Yeah, actually, they are lower. Pa papers were talking about. Sydney being really, really low compared to two th all the way back to 2012. Uh, really, uh, I think that's probably a lot more hype. The auction clearance rates in Sydney did drop to 66.6%, but as we've said earlier, there are a lot of properties coming on the market at a lot higher price, so the buyers and, uh, are cautious and the valuers will be cautious, and the bank interest rates have just jumped up with one bank, so who knows what's going to happen with the rest. So I think it just scares people a little bit, and the papers are very good at getting their message out there quite quickly. But Melbourne, Melbourne came in also in a very good clearance rate of 73.6%. So, you know, it's not that bad. Only Sydney and, and Perth were the two capital cities that were below this time last year. Adelaide was at 72.1% and Canberra, well, that came in at 67.3% and Brisbane at 53.2%. So they're pretty good clearance rates for those areas. Maybe Sydney dipped, but across the market, it's still better than it was this time last year. Now, with this, going back on this uh, kind of media stuff is we're seeing all these headlines and in a way we don't want to add fuel to the fire but at the same time you've got to talk about it but yeah. do you remember we had um, Eubank on three or four weeks ago yes. and we asked them, we asked the CEO and said are you worried about uh, kind of a, a bust or a crash or something like that? Completely happy. Not at all. Not, at all. Not concerned yeah. at all. Now I think the market's fine. In fact uh, I prefer a, a slower market. I prefer vendors that come in at a higher price. I prefer the fact that the agent and the buyer uh, and uh, the seller have to negotiate. I prefer that. Now we had Nathan just saying there that the, uh, the Manly Daily was uh, thick as anything with properties. How are you seeing uh, homes advertised no, for sale? Not, not as thick as. I mean the, the um, stock was higher last week than the week before and the week before that. We only had a modest increase uh, this week of 0.41%, but it's still a climb. Uh, but we are negative now. We're negative 0.53% uh, over this time last year. But so for the last few weeks, we've been higher. So there is a, a change occurring. But New Zealand, wow, 12.9% more stock this week over this time last week. Over this 12 time, in 12 one week. How come? Increase. Well, you know, they're, they're, that's that timing issue. And you see the spring markets kicking in. Everybody's trying to time things in a certain way. I think that could have something to do with it. And also their market's been hot. So a lot of sellers have probably thought, hey, I better get in there now. So, so it's not suddenly a rugby game or a <laughs> no, football game or something no, like that. Gee, they're going to be good. They're going to be good. That's for sure. 
And finally on tour, or not finally, uh, rent price movements. Well, the rent price movements, I'd rather talk to you this time about how they've gone over this time for the start of the year because there's been a bit of a big shift in there. Sydney is up 0.5%, uh, Brisbane's down 0.4%, Melbourne is up 2.58% over this time since the start of the year. But the two that really concern me the most are Darwin, which is down negative 10.97% since the start of the year in rent figures and Perth at negative 9.93%. So people need to prepare themselves in those marketplaces, which have been very very much aligned to mining. So, so the investors need to really have a close look at their investment set and protect themselves and make sure they keep good tenants. And that's quality. the thing, because in those areas where you've got one or two industries doing most of the work there, and if you were going short-term rentals to certainly long-term, there is a massive I difference. It can be there. half, half straight I away. I hire anybody in Perth, Chris. I'd, you, they're paying 90000 or 100000 for people to be receptionists in, in the mining boom up north, and you, you just couldn't hire people. It's, it's getting a bit more normality to that market now, but, boy, it's been, it was really tough. Yeah. And what about the vacancy rates? It ended too bad at all. Sydney came in at 2.6%. Melbourne came in at 3.58%. Uh, uh, the worst performer, but improved on this time last week. Perth, 6.21%. So on average, slightly up from last week. Uh, it's 4.16% over those three capital cities. Last week was 4.04%. So that's not bad. I think that's not too bad at all. Good to see Perth coming back. Now, we're in the third quarter of the year. It's it's almost Christmas. I'm sure there's there's stuff in the shops already. We've literally only got, what, eight weeks well, of um, real estate time? i stockings hanging out, ready to go. Well, I'm looking for, for gifts from you too, by the way, this year. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> well, so what was tip, <laughs> tips for people over the next eight weeks. You, basically, you've got to get things in order if you want to buy this year. Oh, look, a lot of people slow down. This is a great time to buy. When you start getting into the Christmas period and the January period, um, I, th I find that a lot of people pull back a little bit and, and there are still people who need to sell. And so if you really, as a buyer, want to buy, that's your time to start looking in, those, in that particular marketplace. Wonderful. Place. Charles Darby from Century Run, thanks for joining us, and thanks for joining us at home. Until next week, I'm Chris Gray. Good night. The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you.